You're serious. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, you guys. Hi, Kathy. You're like right behind the podium. You can only, yeah. <laughs> You're so skinny. Yeah. Um, welcome to Deep Power this morning. Um, I really, really appreciate you coming and showing up for practice this morning. And I say this every time, but it's such a treat to teach actual beings. Um, oh, I, I feel like I offend the people at home when I say that. No offense. But um, it really is, it makes a difference. And I think that's why you keep showing up, right? Because um, I think there's, there's something really special about <laughs> the present moment <laughs> and, and being, um, being able to see each other's faces and to engage in this way. Um, so thank you for being here. And a lot of you know this, but the poet Rumi would never name his poems because he felt like it would take away some of that aliveness from his words. And they were, they were usually spoken spontaneously. And um, his students and people that followed him would write them down. And so that's how they, they came to be. And, you know, I find, that, I find that really fascinating. And I think um, there's some truth to that. You know, there's a, there is a, a beauty um, and, a, and a certainly a different quality about engaging in the, in the actual moment that we're in than thinking about it, right? Or um, kind of projecting into the future. And so, um, and I wanted to share something with with you this morning that kind of speaks to this. And maybe we can use this as a little bit of a, of a platform or a, a starting place for our, our practice this morning. Um, I came across this quote. I was, um, we've been kind of clearing, well, going through some stuff at Brian's house, my partner Brian, who was here. Um, and he, and I came, across, I came across this quote in one of his boxes that he found. He works at Primary Children's Hospital, and it was the, cha the chaplain had put it up in the chapel, this quote. And it's by an American poet, Donna Stone. And she says this, the most visible creators I know are those artists whose medium is life itself the ones who express the inexpressible without brush, hammer, clay, or guitar. They neither paint nor sculpt. Their medium is being. Whatever their presence touches has increased life. They see and don't have to draw. They are artists of being alive. artists of being alive and I thought how powerful and um, I think that's why yoga speaks to me the way that it does right this um, I think it's such a beautiful expression of life um, in in yoga we call um, the word for life uh, life force energy is prana and so we just acknowledging that today we all have our own unique expression of this life um, and so find your seat everybody let's go ahead and begin our practice with a moment in stillness allowing yourself to be here to be present to feel the breath, which certainly is related to prana, which is 
related to this life force energy that we, that we just talked about. And so as you feel the breath moving through you, acknowledging the life, the presence that exists. And you can begin your ujjayi breath if you're familiar with that method of breathing, that gentle engagement using the muscles at the back of your throat so that you're kind of toning the breath a little bit. So narrowing that passageway for the breath to come in and out of the body. And in a way, this starts to generate a little bit more energy and also allows the breath to be very deliberate and conscious and present. Good, and as you draw your next breath in, let's go ahead and extend the arms all the way up alongside the ears, reaching tall. And then exhale the hands together, heart center. Let's try that again. Inhale, the arms reach wide and lengthen up. And exhale, hands together at the heart. One more, just like that. Full breath in, stretch up tall. And exhale, hands to heart. Good. Stretch just the right arm up alongside the ear, lengthen. And let's come up and over into a nice deep side bend. So you can plant that left hand on the ground, the side of you, root down through the right sits bone to the floor and lengthen along the right arm and ribs and side body. And for the last breath or two here, maybe turn the heart just a little more open toward the ceiling. Good. And then back through center and sending the left arm up and we'll just switch sides, reaching up tall, coming up and over into this side bend. Lengthening the left arm and the ribs and the side body. And again, rooting down through the left hip and sits bone to the floor and perhaps turning the heart just a little more open toward the ceiling. Good, you guys. And then ease back up, stretch up tall and release that left hand down. Good. Let's go ahead and shift forward to the hands and the knees. So if you're sitting on a blanket or a bolster or something, put that to the side. Come forward to the hands and the knees. And we'll start moving a little bit through cat-cow, opening up the heart and the chest on the in-breath, and then rounding through the spine on the out-breath. Good. Nice. And just continue with that movement. And then as you're ready, let's take this any, anywhere you'd like. So you could sit all the way into child's pose. For example, you could move your hips a little side to side or in a circle or even come all the way into a little cobra, opening the chest. Feel into your own expression here, your own expression of life, of prana, movement. Good. And then Whenever you're ready, we're gonna make our way into our first downward facing dog of practice. And so root down through your palms, lift the knees off of the mat and feel into the ground through the hands and the feet. 
And sometimes this first down dog, I like to really be generous with some movement and some shifting of my weight and bending and straightening the legs. And sometimes I like to take my feet a little wider than is typical for down dog. And just, just feel into my body how it's feeling this morning and notice if there are any places that feel a little bit stuck or compromised or especially strong or just whatever is there to be felt. So take a couple more breaths here. And then take another in breath, lift up a little bit through the tailbone and then we're gonna go ahead and bend the knees, look forward toward the top of the mat, step or hop forward toward your hands. Lengthen out your spine as you inhale. So extend forward, chest and belly away from the thighs. And then exhale, fold and bring it back in. Good, let's do that again. So inhale, lift and extend, coming into that flat back, taking all of the curvature out of the back, and then exhale, folding it back in. Take an extra breath here, let your head and your neck and your jaw soften and relax. Good, and then let's go ahead and come all the way up to standing. So anchor the feet and we'll extend and lengthen out through the arms, reach up tall. Stay here for an extra breath as we press down through the feet, reach up and open just a little bit more toward the ceiling. And then exhale, hands come together in front of the heart. Very nice, everybody. Arms back up on in-breath. Let's move through just a couple uh, half salutes here. Exhale, lead with the heart coming forward into your fold. Good, extend your spine, go at your own pace, there's no rush. Exhale, fold back in. Engage the belly, come all the way back up to standing. That reverse swan dive, stretch up as tall as you can. And then hands gather together at the heart. And that much again, stretch up tall, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, dive forward, forward, fold. Good, extend your spine, so lift up and lengthen. Exhale, fold, and draw it in a little deeper, all the way back up to standing. So root and extend, and then hands together, back at the heart, warming up here. Moving into our A series, stretch up tall, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, dive forward into that fold. Good, flat back as you inhale, lengthen and extend. And then let's plant the hands to the floor this time and make our way to plank up or push up. We're gonna hold here for a couple of breaths. And sometimes in this first plank pose, I like to rock forward and back just a little bit. So kind of push my toes into the floor and shift the body forward and back and a little rooting down through the palms and mobilizing and strengthening the wrists a little bit. Good. Now you can always do this from the knees or skip the chaturanga altogether. But on your next exhale, push with your toes and then lower down, chaturanga dandasana. Good, let's slide our forearms forward for a sphinx pose. So your elbows a little bit in front of the shoulders, pull the rib cage, <clears throat> excuse me, and the heart forward like a telescope. And then as you exhale, let's bring it back down, slide the hands back next to your mid ribs, tuck the toes under, and push back up to plank, and then back to downward facing dog. So on your in breath here in your down dog, think about lifting from the waistline and the navel, the belly, the tailbone, 
As you exhale, push the ground away with your hands and maybe allow the heels of your feet to draw closer to the earth. Not that you need to get there to ground the heels, but it's kind of moving in that general direction. Taking one more breath here, downward dog, let your head relax. Bend your knees and look forward, step or hop towards your hands. Lengthen out your spine, coming into that halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Engage the belly all the way back up to standing. So root to rise, reach up tall and lengthen. And then hands come together in front of the heart. Let's move through that again. Maybe a little bit faster. Reach up tall, inhale. And exhale, take it forward, moving according to your own breath. Flat back on inhale, lengthen, crown forward. Hands to the floor, plank pose. Your choice through your chaturanga, lowering down. And this time, let's open up into a little baby cobra pose, opening the chest, and then making our way directly back to downward facing dog. Nice, everybody. <clears throat> Couple more breaths here. And again, the in-breath, inviting some lift and some length. And the out-breath, rooting down, maybe drawing deeper into your posture. Last full breath. Knees bend, look forward, step or hop toward your hands. Extend your spine, flat back, lengthen. Exhale, fold it back in. Now we're gonna bend the knees here quite a bit, so the weight might shift back some toward the heels. And then extend the arms and the torso up for a chair pose, Utkatasana. The feet and the thighs parallel. Sit just a little bit deeper into that chair. And let's bend the elbows and goal post the arms here. So allow the shoulders to soften a little bit down away from the ears. Squeeze the lower uh, tips of the shoulder blades toward one another. And then maybe turn the heart one degree up and open. Good, take your arms back. And you can either take your palms forward like this or interlace the fingers behind the back. Try to pull shoulder blades and elbows uh, toward one another and maybe take your hands away from your lower back. Take another full breath here and then exhale, come into a fold. Now the fingers can stay interlaced or you can always just release your clasp and bring the hands down to the floor. Take tension out of your neck, out of your jaw, out of your face. Last full breath. Release your clasp and take your hands down toward the floor. Lengthen your spine, halfway lift. Good, take the hands to the floor. Before you move to, to your plank and your chaturanga, you're gonna play around with a little crow pose, a little arm balance. So a lot of you are familiar with this pose. It's kind of the most kind of, I don't know, entry level arm balance, I would say. I don't know. Take your knees, take your knees up. It's our gateway drug. It's our gateway arm balance. So, and then once you start, you can't stop. So your knees work up the arms towards your uh, triceps. Press your palms and the pads of the fingers into the floor. You can lean forward. It's a little bit scary sometimes, but pull one or both feet off of the mat. And you can always put a little crash pad out in front of you, a little block or 
blanket. Nice, nice, Amy. Great job, Bailey, fantastic. Nice, Scott. All right, take it back to a plank pose. I'm gonna choose not to do this and just watch you do it. <laughs> okay, stay strong, chaturanga. Nice, Ben. Good, cobra or up dog. So take an extra breath here. Really roll the shoulders back and open your chest. Beautiful. And then downward facing dog on that exhale. Whew. Excellent. Extend your right leg back behind you. Reach it up to a three-legged downward dog. We're gonna hold this for a little bit. Press through your palms, lift that right leg up. Root down through your left heel, or as best you can. Now, we're gonna come into a little teeter-totter version of this down dog. So really feel your right hand on the ground. Walk your left hand back to about the middle of your mat. Maybe keep it there. You can balance on the little, on the fingertips here. Or if you're game, take your left hand away and hug it alongside the body into this three-legged, actually two-legged, <laughs> down dog. Good. Left hand back to the mat. Hug your right knee in toward your chest and step the foot all the way through. We're gonna come into a high lunge or crescent lunge. So let's start, let's, let's break this down. Let's start with the hands on the hips. Even just this simple um, movement, putting the hands on the hips, can really give us a lot of information. We wanna square off the hips, the pelvis is neutral, uh, and hugging inner thighs toward that midline. Take another breath here, lifting up through the chest and the crown of the head, and then let's take the arms up. We call this high lunge or crescent lunge sometimes because you're in this little bit of a crescent shape. In fact, let's go ahead and bend the elbows as we did in chair pose. Put a little bend in the back knee, okay? And turn the chest more open. So you're coming into a little baby back bend. Take two more breaths here. Excellent, stretch back up. Bring the hands to the floor. You're gonna shift forward to standing split. So the weight goes onto that right foot. You can use blocks here. Fingertips can stay on the floor. Or maybe you take the right hand and forearm behind your right calf and really start to fold it in. Put some energy in your left leg your left toes. See if you can reach that leg up one more inch. Very nice. Step left foot to the very back of the mat. Center the right knee over the ankle and take the right arm up for a twist, twisting lunge. Lots of places to go with this. You could, you could always ground the back knee and keep the right hand on the right thigh for a little toned down version of this. Or if you feel like taking it up a notch, you could keep that back knee lifted, take the left elbow over to the outside of that right knee and come into a version of prayer twist. <clears throat> Good, so really root down through that right foot, pull the right, back, uh, the right hip back a little bit, Lengthen through your spine, open your chest to the right. Last full breath. And then hands down to the floor. Let's walk the hands all the way over toward the left side of the room. So the feet are parallel or slightly pigeon-toed. Anchor the feet, stretch forward to your flat back. So you create some length and some space, and then exhale, fold. Good, this is our wide straddle, forward fold. 
prasarita padottanasana. Take a few breaths here, opening through the hips and the hamstrings. Nice, everybody. Last full breath. And we'll lengthen back up, flat back. Walk the hands back up toward the top of your mat. And step your way to plank. Moving into side plank or vashistasana. So the weight will shift toward your right hand, your right palm. You're going to roll to the outer edge of that right foot. Feet and ankles can stay stacked here. Flexing your toes back toward your shins. Pull your hips way up. Good. Use your core. Extend your left arm forward alongside the ear, reaching your fingertips toward the front of the room. See if you can float that left leg up away from your right leg. Good. Stay strong in that right leg. Last breath. Left hand to the floor. Beautiful, you guys. All right, chaturanga, if you're willing, all the way down. Stay on your belly, and you're welcome. Take your, <laughs> take your arms back along your sides, and inhale, lift into a little locust, salabhasana pose. Try bending your elbows a little bit here and pulling your shoulder blades toward one another, as opposed to really um, straightening out the arms and pushing the shoulders forward. Take another full breath here. Imagine you had a block between the thighs and the shoulder blades were magnetized. Lift up, exhale, release. Stretch your right arm out to the right for shoulder pigeon. So the left hand will come to the floor with the elbow pointing up, kind of like you're doing a push-up. Push over toward your right hip and open up front of that right shoulder. It's, this can be an intense stretch for the shoulder, so if it feels like it's too much, bring your chest and belly closer to the mat. If you want to go a little bit Deeper with this, you could always take left hand to left foot, come into a half bow. Good, nice everybody. Give this one more breath. Let's make our way back to the belly, come up to hands and knees. And let's take three big circles with the hips going clockwise. <laughs> Shh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Lisa, I love you. <laughs> All right, come back to center. <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't help myself. All right. <laughs> come back to downward facing dog. Good. Just take a moment here. Feel your body. Feel your breath. And when you're ready... Well, you're going to stretch the left leg back, reach it up, three-legged downward dog. Feel the hands, feel your right foot as it roots down. And we're going to work into that little teeter-totter balance. So feel your left hand especially. Let's walk the right hand back to about the middle of the mat. You could always come up onto the pads of the fingers. And then maybe take your right hand away and hug it alongside the body. Good. Take another breath here. 
It's okay to wobble a little bit, it's part of it. Take your right hand back to the mat, hug your left knee in, strong and engaged, and step your left foot through. Coming into this high lunge. So let's again start with the hands on the hips, just to take a little snapshot, a little inventory here. Squaring off the hips, hugging inner thighs, pushing down on the pelvis a little bit, and lengthening up through your torso, like a little telescope. And then the arms can stretch up. So think about being solid and stable in the legs and the lower body, but spacious and open and receptive in the upper body. We're gonna bend the elbows and bend the back knee and turn the chest a little more open, coming into that baby back bend. For two more breaths, find your edge here. and then stretch back up and exhale hands down. We're gonna step into our standing split so your left root foot roots down, right leg floats up. And just take a moment to feel this, the energy, the engagement that's required, the effort, but also where can you soften and feel into that ease. Good, and maybe take the left hand and forearm back behind your left calf. Put energy in your right leg, the one that's in the air. Take one more breath here, draw those right toes up. And exhale, step it back to your lunge. Now we're gonna set up for a twist. So once again, left knee, stacked over the ankle, right hand on the ground. Send your left arm up. That's kind of the, the basic instruction. You can always come down to that back knee where hand can come to the thigh. Or as we did on the other side, maybe you wanna unweight your right hand, take your elbow over to the outside of that left knee and come into your prayer twist, or this version of the twist. Take two more cleansing breaths here. Root down, hug that left hip back, open the chest, and then exhale, release. Walk your hands over toward the right side of the room. Parallel your feet, flat back as you inhale and exhale, fold. Good, so there are lots of different places you can go with this. You can grab your big toes. You can clasp your hands behind your back. You could come into headstand or even crow pose from here if you want. So, no takers, nobody? <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I mean, wow, guys, everybody's doing a headstand. Really, really good job. Is everyone at home doing a headstand? Because we're all doing a headstand. <laughs> wow, nice levitating, David. Good job. <laughs> David just flew out the window. Good. All right, last breath here. Walk your hands back to the top of your mat. And step to plank pose. All right, stay really strong and lifted. We're gonna shift the weight into the left hand, roll to the outer edge of that left foot, Vashistasana. Flex your toes back toward your shins. Pull your hips way up. You can always come down to a knee or a forearm to modify. Stretch that right arm forward, fingertips toward the front of the room. Good, you guys, see if you can float that right leg up. Awesome, Wendy. Great job, Jen. Last breath here. 
bring it all the way back, plank pose. Stay strong and lifted, you guys, lower down, chaturanga, down to your belly. Now, <clears throat> arms go back. We're gonna come into another locust pose. This time, you could clasp your hands behind the back if you want to, and maybe try to bring your legs a little bit closer together and pull shoulders back and lift. You're trying to pull the knuckles back toward uh, the back of the room, active through the feet. If it helps to put a little bend in your elbows, you can work with that as well. Squeeze toward that midline. Take one more huge breath, maybe a little uplift of the heart and release. Left arm out to the left, shoulder pigeon. Good, you guys. So the right knee can point up, or you could grab a hold of your foot, right foot with your right hand. You guys take another breath here. And then release out of that, come back to your belly. And press up to your hands and your knees. And we're gonna take three big circles with the hips going counter clockwise, then move the other direction. Good. And then come on down to the forearms for dolphin pose, okay? So elbows right underneath your shoulders. And so a good rule of thumb is to grab a hold of opposite biceps, placing the elbows shoulder width apart, and then take the forearms so they're parallel. If you're familiar with dolphin, then don't dilly-dally. Go ahead. Get into it. If you need the instruction, then take it. So we're going to keep squeezing elbows, forearms toward one another. Uh, without moving them closer together, just that isometric hugging in. Let your neck relax here, pick up your knees. And so as we put weight into the forearms, really press with the palms and the pads of the fingers. Don't let your elbows slip out from underneath you. Keep them reined in. Tiptoe forward a little bit toward your face. It's okay to have a slight bend in your knees here. So the other thing is that we don't want the shoulders to shift forward in front of the elbows because then we'll collapse down. The head should not be touching the ground. Shoulders away from the ears. The neck should be relaxed. So you should be, be able to turn your head with ease side to side. Good, you guys. Feel your breath. And let's stretch the right leg up into the air. So lengthen and reach. Breathe through some of, some of the discomfort, some of the tension here. See where you might soften. Maybe give a little tiny hop toward forearm stand and then switch legs. So right foot down. I know this is a long one, guys. You can take some moments on your knees. Good, keep breathing through it. Perfect, everybody. Breathe, maybe do a little hop on the side. Good, 
We're gonna take one more huge breath. If the left foot can come down, one more huge breath. And come on down to your knees. Whew. Child's pose. You can choose to take embryo, which means the arms will come back along your sides. Good, great, everybody. Nice job. Take one more breath here. Come back up to your hands and your knees. And make your way into a downward facing dog. Good. Send your right leg back, reach it up, three-legged dog. Bend your right leg, open up your hip. So without turning the body and compromising your shoulders, shoulder girdle, just see if you could lift your right hip up a little higher than your left. And then step your right foot through for a warrior two position, second warrior position. Right toes and right knee pointing directly forward. Good, pelvis level, strong through the legs and the lower body. And then go ahead and open up your palms here. Put a bend in your elbows so the shoulders can relax down. Take another full breath here as you open. And then exhale the arms down and you're gonna clasp the hands behind the back. Do a little shoulder stretch here, lift and then exhale into ostrich pose or humble warrior. So the right shoulder drops to the inside of that right knee. Root down through your left foot at the back of your mat and let your head and your neck relax. Continue to pull your thighs back. And if this feels like it's too much for the joints, then you can <laughs> Bring your hands to the floor. Take one more breath. Come back upright, back up to warrior two. There's no coffee here. Straighten up your front leg. And we're gonna reach forward triangle pose. Lengthen, bring the right hand down toward the shin or a block, left arm stretches up. Good. Feel your feet equally rooted on the floor. Notice if you are shifting more into one foot or the other. Feel both feet equally as you lengthen up and open through the chest. Take one more breath here. And then we're gonna take that left arm behind the back gaze down at the floor and set up for half moon or Ardha Chandrasana. So shift forward, pick up this left leg. Right fingertips on the ground or on a block. Now you can keep it here, the left arm behind the back, or you can send that left arm up toward the sky, or you could even bend this left leg and come into a half bow. Good, nice, Kathy, beautiful, you guys. Fantastic, take one more breath here as you open and let that go, release. Both hands to the floor, step your left foot to the back of your mat, press through your hands, unweight your right leg and give it a little stretch. So stretch it back behind you and up. You can bend your leg and open and even draw some circles through this right leg. Moving through your hip. And we're gonna gently guide the right leg into pigeon 
pose. You can recline onto your back if that's better. That's a better option, that figure four stretch. Or if you're in this kind of regular version of pigeon, think about the right hip continuing to hug back, left hip forward, squeeze toward that center, and then walk your hands forward and fold. Good, take your time here. Feel into that right hip joint. Good, one more breath. Expand that inhale, release the exhale. Good, make your way back up. Shift your weight over to your right hip. <clears throat> the left leg will swing around. <clears throat> and we're gonna pick up the feet for boat pose, Navasana. Good, pull the belly back, extend the arms forward, shoulders away from the ears, lift up through your <laughs> chest. Bailey, stop. <laughs> it's really hard to laugh. In this <laughs> oh my gosh. It's Bailey's fault, Bailey. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> Take another breath here. Maybe straighten out the legs. Woo, good job. All right, you guys, cross your ankles. I'm gonna be mean for a second. Don't touch your feet to the floor, just pull your knees up, okay? The, imagine there's hot lava on your mat. You can't, except for where you're, except for where you're sitting, I guess. Okay, now, hands to the floor. You can even come up onto your, your ridge tops, okay? You're gonna lift your butt off of the mat without touching your feet to the mat like this. <laughs> Did you do it? <laughs> Did you burn your feet off? Eee! Okay, all right, let's go back to down dog. Enough of that. <laughs> I gotta check the time, gee whiz. <laughs> oh my gosh, we got 10 minutes, whew. All right, left leg in the air, everybody. Bend your leg, open your hip, good job. Nice shoulders. Step your left foot through, warrior two. Good, feel the ground, Ex extend out through your arms. Put, turn your palms up, put a little bend in your elbows, let the shoulders soften down away from the ears, lifting up through your chest. Good, everybody, that looks awesome. Exhale, arms down, clasp your hands behind your back. So we're working into this ostrich pose or humble warrior. So let's drop down, chest leads. You're gonna draw your left shoulder down to the inside of your left knee. Anchor the feet, pull both thighs back and release your neck. Give this a couple more breaths. Make your way back up. Extend out through the arms and straighten up your left leg. Triangle pose, lengthen and reach. Take your left hand down and right arm stretches up. You can use a block here underneath that left hand for a little anchoring and stability. Really feel into both feet equally here as you turn the heart a little more open. Good. 
One more huge breath here in triangle. The right arm is going to go behind the back. Look down at the floor, coming into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon, lifting up that right leg. The right arm can stay where it is, or you can reach it up toward the ceiling, or you could take your half bow, grabbing your foot. It's not required, it's just an option. Good, everybody, excellent. Take one more breath here. Nice, Deborah. beautiful poses. Release out of that. Step it back into your lunge here. And we're gonna root down through the palms. Take the left leg back, stretch it up. Bend your leg and open. And just get some movement here through your left hip joint. Good, and then we're gonna send it into pigeon on this left side. And again, you have the option of figure four on your back, squaring off the hips and lifting up through your chest. And then coming forward, Good. Take a couple more breaths here, deep into that left hip. Good. Make your way back up to your upright position and shift your weight over to your left hip. So this right leg swings around <clears throat> for one more boat pose. Okay, so if, if the hot lava analogy speaks to you, then you can do that again. <laughs> Take your heart support again. <laughs> oh, good Lord, okay. Maybe I prefer it when nobody's here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I love it so much. All right. Oh, I love what David's doing. Let's do that. Grab your, grab your toes. This is a, that's an Ashtanga move, David. That's an Ashtanga move, man. All right. Everybody do this. Don't go on your back, Amy. <laughs> You have to balance here. All right. <laughs> See if you can go in a little bit. Ben, I said don't do that. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Let, let go of your toes and cross your ankles. Pull your knees in. You can do one more of these lifts, okay? Hands to the floor. Again, you can cheat a little bit. Come up onto the pads of the fingers or the ridge tops and lift. It can be like, it can be like paper thin. It can be paper thin. <laughs> oh, David, that is a cheat move. For those of you at home, David had his, I should turn the camera. No, I won't. David has his foot on his block because that's not hot lava. It's like, he found a loophole, found a loophole. All right, come on to your backs. Come on to your backs and hug your knees in. Whew. And we're, I'd love for you all to kind of pick another pose or two, a finishing sequence. So you could do, like a happy baby pose and some spinal twists. Or you could do like a shoulder stand and plow pose or 
bridge pose and um, any finishing sequence that would work for you. And we'll take just a couple of minutes here. Taking your time. <clears throat> there is definitely no rush. But when you do feel ready, you can allow the body to rest and settle into Shavasana, our corpse pose, in such a, a wonderful way to finish our practice in this place of surrender and letting go. And coming back to Rumi, we referred to, to him at the beginning of practice. One of my very favorite quotes by Rumi says, very little grows on jagged rock. Be ground, be crumbled, so wild flowers will come up where you are. You have been stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender.
the most visible creators I know are those artists whose medium is life itself. The ones who express the inexpressible without brush, hammer, clay, or guitar. They neither paint nor sculpt. Their medium is being. Whatever their presence touches has increased life. They see and don't have to draw. They are the artists of being alive. And you feel your own life within you. The breath, this prana, expanding and contracting and flowing through you. And let's begin to move the body. You can start that transition over to your side. And then all the way back up to your seat. On your next in-breath, let's go ahead and extend the arms all the way up. And hands come together at the heart. Really beautiful practice this morning, everybody. We'll finish with one round of OM. Take a full breath in. Namaste.